Uh, Leader Harris, thank you for that uh, description. I, I would note this amendment, Floor Amendment 1, was introduced at 12.15 this morning. Then Floor Amendment 2 came sometime late this evening. And Floor Amendment 3 was introduced uh, just, I don't know, five or six minutes ago. These are not uh, page and line amendments where we can simply see what the changes are. These are gut and replace amendments. So we really have no ability to analyze what's changed between one draft and the next. But I won't belabor that process point because we've been belaboring it for years and nothing changes. So let me just ask you, in the floor amendment that's been adopted here, what is the total revenue projection for fiscal year 22? That would be 42 billion 315 million in GRF. This morning, or earlier this afternoon in committee, you indicated that the GRF revenue was approximately $41.3 billion. Has something changed, or was that just a misstatement earlier? Well, as I said this morning, the chart I had in front of me was dated a okay. different day. So sure. this is the accurate information. Thank you. And the overall spending number? $42 billion, $220 million. Uh, earlier this year, when the governor proposed uh, his budget, he proposed nearly a billion dollars worth of um, tax increases of one kind or another. He called them loopholes. Certainly, a uh, scholarship program for low-income children isn't a loophole, corporate loophole. Which of those uh, tax increases did you decide to incorporate into this budget? Uh, those are not in this bill. The revenues from those are in this bill. So what, it, what, the, uh, what we're discussing are the net operating loss uh, uh, deduction, the accelerated depreciation, uh, freezing the uh, fr franchise tax at its current level, and the uh, foreign dividend advantage. And together, is it fair to say that that's a, about 650 or $660 million? In that vicinity. These are $660 million that would not have been owed in taxes by Illinois businesses that will now be owed in taxes by Illinois businesses as a result of these changes? Well, in many of these cases, uh, if the federal government had not changed their policies, we would have been collecting those taxes as a part of standard procedure. That's right. The federal government did change their policies, though, and they did so a couple years ago. And Illinois businesses saw federal tax changes and saw what the state tax treatment was. And these, uh, these changes tonight are going to result in an additional $660 million in taxes for Illinois businesses. Uh, another point, the, the elimination of the franchise tax was an initiative that had broad bipartisan support and was indeed signed into law by the governor uh, just about two years ago. Um, your proposal tonight, I believe, freezes the phase out of the franchise tax. Now, the franch eliminating the franchise tax was an item that um, Republicans uh, brought to the table during bipartisan capital bill negotiations. And we secured an agreement to eliminate that. Our initial proposal, in fact, was to eliminate the franchise tax immediately. There was a request made uh, by your side of the aisle that we phase it out over the course of a few years. And in order to be reasonable, we accepted that agreement. I was worried at the time that we might get to a point like this, where that agreement and our uh, accommodation of a phase-out schedule would be frozen. Freezing the franchise tax where it is today will mean that 6,206 businesses who had seen in state statute that the franchise tax was going to be eliminated will now see that it's not going to be eliminated and that those over 6,200 businesses will, in, will be required to continue to pay a franchise tax in the future because our bipartisan agreement is being broken here tonight. So after we look at what uh, these hundreds of millions of dollars in new taxes that businesses will owe, we also have to think about the over $5 billion of debt that exists in the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund, which, if it's not addressed, will result in significant benefit reductions for unemployment recipients 
and significant tax increases for employers, does uh, this budget allocate money to reduce the debt in the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund? We are uh, putting $100 million in to pay interest uh, to the trust fund. We have a difference of um, opinion on, I actually wouldn't say opinion, there are two different um, uh, narratives being talked about about the use of that $100 million. I know we've had a discussion about that earlier. I just, I, I thought I'd clarify, it's my understanding most recently that that $100 million deposit in the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund is not to pay interest, but instead to um, cover the cost of the expansion of unemployment insurance to non-instructional uh, education employees and to allow for the waiver of non-fraud related IDES overpayments in the last year. I'm corrected my, my colleague that you are correct and I was wrong in my explanation. So the, the unemployment insurance trust fund debt is not being addressed. You are correct. I was incorrect. Okay. What is the, um, <clears throat> you, this year's budget, and you know, one of the reasons we have paid even further attention to the ability to analyze this year's budget is that every state budget is complex, and you know, we, both, we both know that. This year, though, is particularly complex because of the uh, unique one-time treatment of the receipt of both some remaining funds from the CARES Act as well as new funds from ARPA. Uh, what uh, you know, and I know ARPA has multiple uh, features, but much attention has been given to the approximately $8.1 billion that the state government will receive, over which we have a greater degree of control still within the federal rules. So of that $8.1 billion, what does uh, this bill appropriate from those funds? Yeah, approximately $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion in... Uh, ARPA-related funds appropriated here. Is there an additional uh, appropriation for capital funds? If, if capital projects are funded and go out, there would be hopefully another billion dollars there. Is that included in this bill or is that in the capital appropriation bill? The capital is in this bill, so it, yeah, it would be 1.5 billion in, in general okay. operating and a billion in capital. And we, we then would uh, remain with approximately five and a half billion dollars of uh, ARPA state funds that have not yet been appropriated and could not be spent without further legislative action? Yes. Okay. Uh, we addressed this in committee and I'd like to um, enlighten all members of the House about this. When we talked about the capital appropriations. Leader Demer, please bring your remarks to a close. Then a debate was announced. Short debate was announced. To the bill. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, we have contained in this bill, as was discussed in committee this afternoon, a billion dollars in capital projects at the request of member initiatives from one side of the aisle. These are federal funds funded by people who pay federal taxes. Each of us in every district in Illinois have constituents who pay federal taxes, whose tax dollars have been collected and sent back to the states for equitable use. My question would have been, when you were making those capital requests and after you had visited the redistricting map room, did those capital requests come for your new districts or for your old districts? Another of the problems of a politician picking their own districts. You can now make that pleasant phone call to say, good news, Mayor, I've drawn you into my district and I have a little cash to give you as well. I would also like to point out that in the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, there are 46 new grants ranging between $50,000 and $2.6 million. 46 new grants. Were those member initiatives as well? In the Department of Human Services, 76 new grants, ranging between $50,000 and a million Demer, dollars. Thank you, Leader Please bring your remarks to a close. Mr. Speaker, we've talked many times in this chamber about it being a new day. The only new day is going to happen in five minutes when the clock strikes midnight. Because what we're seeing on this floor 
is the same dark old days that we've struggled under for years. This is not appropriate. This is not the way things should be handled. We all know that. Let's give transparency a chance. The only change that happens here is change that we make happen. Vote no.